welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about wood chips and wood dust. I had a comment on the uh, channel the other day, and it was from a guy who'd been using something similar to this, but I think he made it clear that it wasn't a Pro-Q smoke generator. It was another version, a copy of it. And he rated it zero out of 10 because he tried all sorts of different things couldn't get it to light. But um, it prompted me and I thought, well, okay, so there are a myriad of different wood dusts and chips out there. There are a lot of things that can affect how they burn. And I wanted to just give you some of my experience of using these over the last decade to make your life a little bit easier. Uh, watch to the end because there's lots of interesting content and some of those tips that I'm going to give you may be able to help you uh, overcome some issues that you have with your um, burn generator, especially over the winter because that can actually cause some issues. So first things first, what I want to do is to talk a little bit about uh, the wood dust and different types of woods that we've got and the species in particular. So some of the wood dusts I've got here, uh, I've, and I've just pulled a random example of about six wood dusts here. I've got apple, sweet chestnut, hickory, whiskey oak, beech, and birch. And they all behave slightly differently. So for instance, the apple burns reasonably quickly. This is all uh, in a dust configuration. The hickory burns really quite nicely. Whiskey dust is a little bit sluggish. Beech is a very reliable dust. Birch also very reliable. Sweet chestnut in its dust form does have a tendency to go out. So when we sell this, we actually blend this with beech dust because it actually means that it, it will keep going and you will still get that. Um, that sweet chestnut aroma from it. But um, if you look at that very carefully, come in and have a, a close look at that, you can see that some of those dust particles, we call this a dust, but they are actually quite large. Okay, come back out from that. And, uh, but it is, the, it is a species issue, it's not down to the um, the grade of the dust, if you like, the, the fineness or the coarseness of it. However, that is an issue with some dust, in fact, most dusts. When you use one of these Pro-Q smoke generators, you're looking to achieve a smolder. And you want that smolder to sort of follow this maze all the way round, so that you end up getting a nice long burn uh, without putting too much heat into your cold smoker. But the wood dust has got to be suitable to be able to smolder in this environment here. And, and that's very important. Some dusts behave better, mainly because they're quite fine, but not too fine. And I'll show you what I mean. So one of my most reliable burning dusts is beech. If I show you that, you can see how fine it is. But actually, if I spread a bit out on the worktop here, and you go close in and have a look at that, you can actually see it's quite a clean dust. What I mean by that is it doesn't have a lot of really fine airborne particulate in there. Do you know what I mean? So that's all kind of about half a millimeter is about the smallest size. And this, this dust burns really well. Well, when I say it burns, it doesn't actually burn in the traditional sense with a flame. It tends to smolder. And that's what we want to achieve with this particular type of smoke generator. We want it to smolder. Some dusts I've got don't smolder so well, because if you look at them, they have got, I'll use the spoon because I don't want to get my finger dirty. Can you see that's quite a dirty dust? If you look here, you can see that is incredibly fine particulate. What it does, it makes it too dense and there's not enough air between the particles and this has a tendency to go out. 
So when I get a particularly, ordinarily when you get this when it's new, I mean this is the dregs of the bag, but when you get this when it's new, it's got more of that in it, okay? So it's got more sort of particulate size and therefore you get more air around it and it tends to smolder quite well. But if you get a little dirty section, this is whiskey oak, so it's made from whiskey barrels. And that means that if you remember, or if you, if you, I don't know if you know anything about the way that whiskey is, is made, but the inside of the barrels is usually charred. And it's charred quite heavily to impart a flavor and also a color to the whiskey. And, um, and when these barrels are used, rather than just throw them away or use them as garden planters, um, some bright spark decided to break these up into small bits and sell them as dust and chip. And, um, and this is the byproduct, and we use it for food smoking. But the problem with um, whiskey oak is that the chip, albeit very clean, the byproduct is the dust. So you get quite a large quantity like that. But when you get to the end, you get this incredibly fine particulate dust, and that tends to extinguish it. One thing about oak is that when it does burn, and obviously this is charred in a previous life, it will self-protect and extinguish. So if this has a tendency to go out. Now I've had several burns with dust like this, not as dirty as this, um, which does burn okay, but I've also had a few failures where I've had to mix it with other dust. And my go-to dust for mixing is beech, because beech has that sort of open structure to it, gives a, it allows a little bit more air around the particles, and it tends to smolder a lot more reliably, and that's what we're aiming for. Okay, so, and you might ask yourself, well, why don't chips smolder in the same way as dust? And it's reasonably simple. There's a lot of air surrounding each of those chips. If you look at this in a very micro level, you've got a lot of air around those chips. And when you burn that, the heat is able to leave very readily. The chips are quite large, so they, they're more difficult than dust to, to ignite. And also the heat um, will be able to leave there very readily. So there won't be much insulation quality going on with this wood and it has a tendency to self-extinguish after a very short period of time. Whereas dust, when you, when you light dust, it has a tendency to form a little bullseye of burn uh, and that will smolder and that will then transfer heat to the next bit and that will ignite and it will carry on going and going and going and smolder. And because there's not as much air surrounding these particles of wood, you get a, almost like an insulation quality going on. And that's important because that means that it will transfer the heat onto the next bit of wood that needs to be burnt. So that will continue on in a process which will last as long as you have a channel for it to continue on with. So there is a sweet spot with dusts. Too fine and they will go out. Too coarse and they will go out. So it's like the old Goldilocks situation. It's got to be just right. Um, but that's not too narrow a band. And I'll give you an example of that. So I've got some apple chips here. Now I'll put them next to this beach dust here, so you can have a closer look at it. They're both classed as um, dusts because they both work in the Pro-Q smoke generator, but these chips here, they do have a bit of coarse chip in it, so disregard that, that's just my, that's just my poor mixing. But I want you to focus yourself on the smaller chips there, because that is one of our grades of fine chips that we use for the Pro-Q smoke generator. And that is about as coarse a chip as you can use to get a sustained smolder. Now I've got some cherry, which is uh, the same grade. And that, again, is classed as a chip. You can see it's very clean. There's no dust in there. And that, again, is about as fine a chip as you're going to get to smolder. Uh, 
or I should say it's about as coarse a dust as you're going to get to smolder. But you can see the difference. So the cherry and the apple are quite coarse. As I said, disregard these big chunks because that's me mixing some of the big chip in with it. Uh, if you compare it to the beach, you can see there's a massive difference in size. You know, these ones are about one to two millimeters in, uh, in their dimensions. And this is about, I think the actual grade of this particular beach dust is about 500 to 750 microns. So that's half a mil to three quarters of a mil um, on average. So those about the, they're about the coarsest dust that will, will burn. One other thing I want to show you, certainly with um, this apple dust here, is that this does have a tendency to burn sometimes and then go out. And um, I'll, I'll just show you this because it is quite interesting. I've got a little ramp in here which is clean. I've got a sieve. And if I show you how much of this dust is actually very fine particulate dust. You can see it dropping out the bottom there. So that's pretty much about, it's about 10% by volume, maybe a, maybe a fraction more than 10% by volume. There. So, this is what will cause it to go out. If you've got too much of this in the dust and not enough of this coarser stuff, this will go out. It's very difficult when you're making wood dust to avoid this. Um, and uh, if, you, if you do have a go at making your own wood dust, just be aware of that. That if you get too much of the fine stuff, it's likely to go out. And uh, that's very, very true when it comes to using whiskey oak. Let me talk a little bit about moisture because moisture can be a real issue with, um, with getting a smolder going. If your dust is too moist, it generally won't smolder. So all our smoking dusts that we use and the ones we sell on our website they are all dried to below 5%. And that's almost furniture grade stability for wood. And it will, it will have a much more reliable smolder if it's that dry. If it gets wet, it can be a real problem. So all our bags are resealable and we keep all our, our dusts, as you can see, in plastic boxes. Now the environment that you smoke in as well is quite important. In cold damp conditions these do have a tendency to go out especially if you've got damp in your cold smoker. One of the problems with a long burn is that one of the products of combustion is moisture. So the early bits of burn as it progresses through this maze the early bits are going to be quite dry, but by the time you come to the end, where this has been sitting around for around about eight hours, this middle bit here, it might well have absorbed quite a lot of moisture and it could have a tendency to go out. That's why it's really important to have the driest possible dust that you can have. And one solution for that is that I try not to cold smoke on cold damp days, but Sometimes you just got to do it. Um, and in the UK, there isn't really much option in winter. It's usually cold and damp. So you just got to crack on with it and, and try and overcome some of those issues. So one of the things that I've done, and I've done previous videos on my top five tips for using the Pro-Q smoke generator, where I filled this completely and then stuck it into the oven on it's a burn tray like this. I always stick it on a metal tray because it's easier to handle. And that goes in the oven for about 10, 15 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius. And that will drive off any moisture that's likely to be present. And then you can light this. Um, and I tend to light it with the blowtorch. If you want to have a look at that five tips video, I'll leave a link in the description um, and that will get you through any issues that you've got with, with actually lighting it. 
I want to show you the smoke generator in a little bit more detail. So there are some copies of this out on, on the market and I, I want to make it absolutely clear, um, full disclosure, I'm not sponsored by ProQ in any way. I sell their equipment on my website, coldsmoking.co.uk, but I am not paid by them to do these videos. This is completely on my own volition and really just to answer people's questions and to help them along their way in using this kit because I think it's great kit. Um, so there are copies on the market. They may not be made of the same stuff as this. Now the mesh on this is particularly fine. If you come in and have a close look at that, you can see that that is actually very fine mesh. It's held in a sort of stainless steel frame, so it's quite rigid, but it is very fine and that is important. And it's important because of what I was mentioning about heat being drawn away from the smoke generator by, by either a cold environment or the fact that this is too heavy. If the metal's too heavy, um, any heat that's being produced in this channel through combustion can be drawn away and you'll end up with the, uh, with the thing going out. I've got um, a little burn tray I use here and if I compare it to the ProQ smoke generator, this is a lot more substantial. Now it's very difficult for me to get wood dust to burn in this channel because it is too heavy gauge and it draws a lot of the heat away from the dust. And that is clearly, I find, a, a big issue. I can, the only way I can overcome that is by putting a massive pile of dust on this. So I've just put a, a video out recently where I was smoking some cheese, uh, smoking some butter in my countertop uh, cold smoker. And I used this under the cloche to, to act as a cold smoke generator. And I had to put quite a lot of dust on top of here to get it to smolder, but it did eventually. But I did have a few failures where it went out. So that can suck away some of the heat. There's also issues around cleaning it as well. And uh, I'll show you that here, because I've got one here that's cleaned and another here that could do with a little bit of a clean, but it's not that dirty enough to have a clean. But you can see the, the sort of plain difference there between the two. Um, so what do I do when I get a dust that is a real difficult burn and it, it just won't smolder? Well, one of the things that I do is I always look for a dust that has an element of reliability about it. And for me, it's beach dust. And I will try and blend with this dust. Now, the reason I use beach is because it is a reliable dust, but not only that, it's quite a neutral aroma to it, so and it's slightly sweet as well. And it acts as a really good carrier. Some of the other dusts I've got here, like sweet chestnut, hickory, and apple, if they're not burning particularly well, you'll still get the aroma of the apple, the hickory, the sweet chestnut coming through uh, and overpowering the beech. But the beech will act as a, as a way of actually encouraging it to burn. So I always tend to, to blend dusts in that way. One other thing I do um, is I don't just burn wood dusts. I also burn things like lavender. Um, I've got some spruce needles here. And on their own, I'll show you, on their own, this is quite, quite dense. I'll just put some on my hand and you can see but it's actually quite a dense wood. Well, I call it a wood, it's more of a leaf, but that doesn't tend to smolder too easily on its own. So I just mix that in with a bit of beech dust and that works really well. Great way of infusing some interesting flavors into your food. Um, lavender smoked cheese is really interesting as well. And we did some lavender smoked butter a little while ago, which prompted the video where we did the beech smoked butter. Um, other, other sort of herbs I use are things like bay. Shame it's not smelly vision because that is unbelievable. So if you're doing some smoked lamb, a bit of beech and a bit of bay works really well. Um, same with rosemary. 
that's absolutely delicious. It's got a beautiful aroma to it. And I think that's pretty much it. So in summary, keep your dusts dry. Understand that particle size is important. So if it's too small, it can cause problems with combustion. If it's too coarse, very likely gonna go out. And if you understand that, understand the fact that some dusts do tend to not burn as well. So for instance, sweet chestnut dust is one of those culprits that really does always like to go out. So whenever someone says they want to use um, sweet chestnut dust, I always say we'll mix it with something that burns a little bit more reliably and you'll end up with a better result. Um, so if you remember those tips, um, you shouldn't go too far, uh, too far wrong. And um, well, that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments. And if you like the video, please do subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon for notification when we upload new content. In the meantime, folks, have a great day, enjoy your food smoking, and uh, see you on the next one. Take care, bye.